Tyler Barris has admitted to swatting, calling authorities and triggering SWAT teams across the country to surround the homes of unwitting victims. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining our picks for 10 influencers who turned to murder. New details tonight in the case of Courtney Clenny, the social media model charged with second degree murder. For this list, we'll be looking at people with large followings on various social media platforms who committed murder or whose reckless actions led to fatalities. Have you heard of any of these cases before? Kelsey Turner. If you're not familiar with the name Kelsey Turner, she was an Instagram and magazine model, also known as Bad Barbie. Kelsey was spending mad dough, but I never really knew what her source of income was. But those close to Thomas knew exactly where the money was coming from. She and child psychiatrist Thomas Bruchard connected via socials. However, after years of funding her lifestyle, Bruchard wanted to end their relationship. This, along with text messages Turner found on his phone about discussions of having her kids taken out of her care, caused her, her boyfriend John Logan Kennison, and her roommate Diana Pena to fatally act in 2019. I warned him on Saturday when he was there that, you know, maybe you ought not wait till Monday to come home. They violently attacked the doctor and left the 71-year-old in the boot of Turner's car. In 2023, Turner accepted an Alfred guilty plea and received a sentence of 10 to 25 years, while Kennison got 18 to 45. Turner agreed to a plea deal and negotiated a sentence that avoided trial that was back in November. She acknowledged that prosecutors could prove second-degree murder. Pena provided evidence against Turner and pleaded guilty to accessory. Claire Miller. Specializing in lip-syncing videos and skits on TikTok, teenager Claire Miller had a respectable following on the platform. But that would all change after what happened on February 22nd, 2021. Now, this incident happened early this morning at the Miller home on Clayton Road in Mannheim Township. In the early morning, Miller fatally stabbed her disabled sister, Helen, at their family home in Pennsylvania. She then called the police and admitted her terrible crime. Officials say the girl's parents were asleep during the incident. This is shocking and tragic. It's it's not the kind of thing we would expect um, in our neighborhood. It's, it's very quiet and peaceful, and um, obviously a tragedy like this is sad news. After they arrived at the scene, they arrested the teenager. Disturbingly, thousands of followers flocked to Miller's TikTok account and subscribed before it was removed. In 2023, Miller, after waiving her rights to a trial, pleaded guilty but mentally ill to the crime. She was arraigned this morning, denied bail, and transported to Lancaster County Prison. As such, she was sentenced to jail for 12 and a half to 40 years. Taleb Hussein. Better known as Lems, Taleb Hussein is a rapper who's brought in millions of views for his music videos through the YouTube channel Link Up TV. Swaggered off when I walk through, my set tight like small shoes. But he's been inactive for several years. And the reason for that? Hussein's currently serving a 26 year sentence for killing 30 year old Shemisla Golomovsky over a reported drug dispute. He, Del Piero Mothersill, Damian Rooney, Philip Mendy, and Jamal Jang went after Golomovsky after he was said to have stolen from and struck Mothersill. In 2018, the five broke into Golomovsky's home in Bedford, England, and fatally attacked him as he slept. In 2019, Hussein, who had been convicted of dealing in 2012, was sentenced for Golomovsky's slaying alongside Mothersill and Rooney. Mendy and Jeng were sentenced to manslaughter and received 12-year sentences. Cameron Heron In 2021, TikTok exploded with a cult-like obsession over 21-year-old Cameron Heron. At the time, he was appearing in court after causing the tragic killing of 24-year-old Jessica Reisinger Robinald and her infant daughter three years prior. May 23rd of 2018 was... Such a catastrophic day. Heron had been street racing at over 100 miles per hour in Tampa, Florida when he struck the two. Many fan pages spawned on social media, with comments, for example, calling Heron too cute to face jail. Hashtag justice for Cameron Heron and free Cameron would trend on Twitter and TikTok. 
Heron's attorney denies he or his client's family had anything to do with it. Heron's own TikTok account amassed over 2 million subscribers after he went viral. But not long after, all his personal social media accounts either went dark or were deleted. Heron was sentenced to 24 years in jail. In 2022, his appeal to reduce the length was rejected by a judge. A judge ruled he will not receive a sentence reduction after receiving a sentence of 24 years in prison for the 2018 fatal crash on Bayshore Boulevard. Casey Viner In 2017, Twitch streamer Casey Viner, who operated under the name Vaporizer, got into an argument with Shane Gaskill, who went by Miracle after the two lost a bet while competing in Call of Duty World War II. That this incident began because of an argument between Casey Viner in Ohio and Shane Gaskell in Wichita when they were teammates playing Call of Duty. As things got heated, Viner threatened Gaskill with swatting, where a fake emergency is called in at someone's address, sending armed police. Gaskill, not taking it seriously, sent his address. Viner then contacted Tyler Barris, who had a history of swatting and a criminal record to make the call to authorities. Federal documents show Gasco previously gave Viner an old address, and Viner asked this guy, 25-year-old Tyler Barris from Los Angeles, to swat him. However, Gaskill hadn't given him his current address, but an old one. The police were sent to Andrew Finch's house, who had nothing to do with the situation. He was fatally shot by cops. Finch's family now wants the police department held accountable, while prosecutors in Kansas hope Barris's stiff sentence sends the message that swatting is no game. In 2019, Viner received a 15-month sentence, Gaskill got 18, and Barris acquired 20 years. Brandon Clark in 2019, Instagram influencer Brandon Clark got in touch with Bianca Devins, who had a bigger following. By July, the two were going to a gig together, but as they returned to Utica, New York, an argument sparks between them. According to Utica police, Clark and Devins, who met on Instagram, were coming back from a concert near New York City a couple of weekends ago when they got into a fight. Then, Clark viciously and fatally attacked Devins. He even took pictures of the grim crime and posted them online, which quickly spread on numerous platforms. Some believe he released the images to shock people, while others think he had hoped to gain fame. Clark, with a self-inflicted injury at the scene, was arrested, and his social media profiles were shut down by the platforms. After having pleaded guilty and then attempted to withdraw it, he was convicted of murder in 2021 and sentenced to 25 years in jail. Brandon Clark did speak to Bianca's family, he expressed remorse. He said he's sorry. He didn't know who he was that day when he killed her and that she did not deserve this. Trey Sessler. In 2006, Trey Sessler started his channel as Mr. Anime before changing it to Lens Cap Productions. He grew a passionate following as one of the first channels to review anime and video games on YouTube. Soon, his content took an odd turn. It's Mr. Anime. Or you can call me Trey, you can call me the guy that does the video game reviews, you can call me the guy that does all the gun stuff now. He filmed skits many found uncomfortable and showcased an obvious fascination with firearms. In 2012, at his family home in Waller, Texas, he massacred everyone inside, ending the lives of his mother Rhonda, father Lawton, and brother Mark, who appeared in Sessler's videos. The thing about my family is um, I would protect them with my life. But um, at the same time, if anyone was going to hurt him, it was going to be me. He also had plans to attack the nearby Waller High School, where he graduated years before. But after sitting in the school's parking lot, he changed his mind. Sessler was eventually arrested at a friend's house. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Life in prison without parole for Sessler and no chance of an appeal is about the closest thing to closure the town is likely to find. So has justice served you? I don't know how to answer that. Randy Stare. In 2007, Randy Stare, a.k.a. Andrew Blaze, created a skit channel, Pioneers Productions, on YouTube and teamed up with other creators. But by 2015, he changed his style as his obsession with the show Danny Phantom took over his life, and he created the channel Ember's Ghost Squad. Stare's video content style grew darker, 
and his final video uploaded details the crime he was about to commit. It turns out YouTube videos of Stair preparing for the attack have been found. Police also say there are journal entries that showed his planned attack, or he planned the attack, for several months. In June of 2017, Stair, who worked at the Weiss Market supermarket in Eaton Township, Pennsylvania, walked into the store for his late night shift. Police say Stair showed up for the night shift at 11 p.m. and started carrying out his plan, blocking the exits. After closing, he began his shooting spree. He soon blocked off the doorways and went on a rampage with firearms. Stair took the lives of co-workers Terry Lee Sterling, Victoria Brong, and Brian Hayes before taking his own. The Wise Markets is closed, but that didn't stop passers-by from stopping by to drop off flowers and other mementos to help honor Terry Sterling, Victoria Brong, and Brian Hayes. Samantha Wolford. In 2015, police arrived at the home of lifestyle influencer and aspiring actor Samantha Wolford in Titus County, Texas. They were called as a distraught Wolford said she'd witnessed a home invasion and been tied up as her husband, Ernie Ibera, was kidnapped. So walk me through what happened. I don't honestly know what happened. Okay. I was in bed asleep okay. and we heard a noise and the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed. Jonathan Kyle Sanford, Antonio Jose Ponce, and Octavius Lamar Rhymes were found to be responsible for the crime, and Ibera's body was discovered in the woods. During the police interview, however, Wolford's story began to raise eyebrows with its inconsistencies. But the evidence we found on the scene is just not matching. I don't think you, I don't think you harmed this boy, but I think you know who did. As it turns out, Wolford had orchestrated the kidnapping and execution of her husband. In March 2017, Wolford was found guilty of aggravated kidnapping and received a 50-year sentence. In September 2017, she was subsequently sentenced to 99 years for Ibera's murder. While Wolford appealed her cases, her attempts were unsuccessful, and it seems she'll spend the rest of her life behind bars. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Courtney Clenny. Also known as Courtney Taylor, Courtney Clenny had a presence on Instagram and OnlyFans as a model. Living with her boyfriend Christian Ubumselli of two years in Miami, Florida, the two had a destructive relationship that came to a head in April 2022. The secret recordings are now in evidence in the murder case against Courtney Cleaney, and they offer a revealing window into how deeply toxic their relationship was. One afternoon at their condo, the couple got into an altercation that resulted in Clenny fatally stabbing Ubumselli. The model admitted she was responsible, but claimed it was done in self-defense. I grabbed a knife and I said, don't come anywhere closer to me. I had absolutely no intention of using it. I'm on the phone with my mom and he's coming at me like he's gonna grab either the phone or like the knife or something. However, friends and family of Obam Selly have stated that she was the abuser in the relationship. After Clenny's admittance, Obam Selly's family issued a wrongful death lawsuit against her in April, 2023. Both cases are still ongoing at the time of writing. And they reached out to the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office earlier for an update on that timeline, and they said at this point, no trial date has been set, so her future clearly is uncertain. 